So welcome to part two of our Responsible Leadership podcast. In the first edition, we spoke with David Lewis, former Deputy Chief Constable of Dorset, Devon and Cornwall Police. And now I'm delighted to have the opportunity to ask Joe Ewell, the Chief Executive of Missing People, the same questions. Good morning, Joe. Morning. Hello there. And thank you so much for being one of our speakers on the workshop that's coming up uh, in 2023. And just a quick flavour, if you could do, give us a 20 second resume. So I've had a split career, half of my career in the music industry as a, a writer and a performer. So I played piano and wrote songs and um, did all that wonderful top of the pops sort of stuff. And, and then um, I've had the other half of my career in the charity sector um, as a Samaritan for 10 years uh, on the board of Brook Young People for six years. And I've been leading missing people for just 10 years now, a decade. I can't believe it. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. What do you understand by the concept of putting on your own oxygen mask first before helping others? So I always think about what does the job, what does the organisation need from me? What do I need to be to support everybody else? And therefore, you end up in that slightly strange position of needing to put yourself first so that you can live up to the expectations of the role. So for me, it's about making sure that my uh, energy levels are good and realising that no one's going to do that for me. And I've spent quite a lot of time thinking about how to look after myself, particularly as someone who is much more prone to looking after other people first. So I've really taken that to heart. It's an expression that I use a lot. Um, and I try not to feel guilty when I do stuff that I know is going to help me to be everything that the job demands of me on a good day. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. So how do you ensure that responsible leadership is the golden thread that runs through your working life? Are there any key uh, pointers that you could uh, share with anyone? I think it's a real honour to lead other people. And it took me a while to understand what leadership was about. And that is, for me, about helping everyone on your team to be their absolute best and to really thrive. That means, as a leader of a charity, that we deliver big impact. But it also means that people are as happy as they can be in the workplace. So I realised this a while ago, that if I looked after the team and help them to be resourceful and cope with the highs and the lows that we would get more out of everyone and people would be able to deliver more. So for me, it's really entwined with high performance leadership. So on realizing that, and I've had that 10 years in this job to be able to work on that, to think about how do I help set people up to do really well? And for me, it's about a series of questions and understanding for people, what is it that sets them up well? What are the conditions in which they thrive? For me, I need a tidy workplace. I need to have listened to some inspiring stuff. I needed to have done a bit of exercise on, on, a, on a good day. Um, and, that, and from that place, and I put a wash on, I feel a lot better and I feel a lot more able to be what the role demands of me. But it's different for different people. So I spend a lot of time asking people, what's you on a good day? What helps you be good that day? And how do you dig deep? What makes you resourceful? And I think if you start meetings with a, with a question of um, what are you looking forward to? What's a good thing that's happened to you? Um, what's something that's helping you at the moment? What's something you appreciate in somebody else? Out of that resourceful place, you can cope with the real challenges that we all have at work. And so I try to remember to do that as often as I can to help us be able to dig deep, have a bucket of resourcefulness to help us cope with sometimes, you know, quite stressful, serious roles that put a lot of pressure on us. And, um, and we need to look after ourselves in that. I love that, Joe. the bucket of resourcefulness. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. That's great. Um, so you've, again, you've touched on this beautifully, but uh, anything more you like, might like to add? So as leaders, how might we best model self-care in order to enable individuals and teams to flourish? Is there anything more that you could uh, offer on that one? 
I've realized that because I'm quite a high energy person and consistently quite high energy, because I'm able to do the things that really energize me, that sometimes that sets a bit of a pace for others. I remember somebody on my team saying, the great thing with you, Joe, is your energy, but it doesn't really relent. And that puts the pressure on. So I've noticed that. So sometimes I think modeling, looking after yourself is just clocking off for a while, letting people breathe, giving them space, um, letting people make mistakes, talking about mistakes you've made yourself. I've tried to be way more honest um, with my team um, at times when I've felt emotional. And I had the most touching moment when somebody on my team knew I was really struggling I lead a charity that supports people that are missing and families missing loved ones and I was having a really tough time with it somebody on my team said do you need to talk to somebody about this and I said yes please and I had a conversation and I've since shared that I've done that because I really was struggling I was feeling quite dark for for a few days it had really affected me and in talking about it I think it gives permission for other people to need be open about needing to seek a bit of help. And I've, I share that in all sorts of different settings. Um, and it's put me in a bit of a vulnerable place. And for me, a vulnerable place is when your bottom lip starts going and you're worried that you might have a little cry. And of course, as a leader, you need to provide strength to an organization. But of course, strength is about coping with being upset as much as it is about being strong. So I try to be as honest as I can. Uh, to talk about days when I'm feeling a bit knackered and make it acceptable to be in various different states. We're all just living our lives at work. And if we can bring that into our discussions and accept that some days you're having a tough day or life's thrown you a bit of a hard knock, being able to share that with colleagues, I think gives them permission, hopefully, to do the same. And in that, you're stronger together. Joe Yule, Chief Executive of Missing People, thank you so much for your time today. We've really appreciated hearing from you. Pleasure. Great to chat.